Hello, everybody, or in this case, nobody. Uh, working on the, let's see, this would be the southeast road or the east road going up, making sure lodgy trucks can make it up, even though I'm not too concerned about it. But, uh, you know, if the insurgents start blocking all the valleys off, all your helicopters are destroyed. I mean, you know, you got to take a truck up. So, uh, this is going to be the process. Uh, I pretty much drive up. Anywhere I can't get the Logi truck up, I go ahead and uh, jump out real quick, try to fix it, and then keep going. So this is uh, Camp Michigan uh, down in the Peach Valley. It's uh, still building it out. Trying to figure out what to do here, looking at new sandbags, fixing random boulders. <laughs> the lower valley was recently redone, so I gotta spend some time building it out. But I think I think a lot more action's gonna go on down here. Especially if the insurgents push the US out of the valley. Uh, Camp Michigan probably won't be a uncaptured base. There'll be a base down towards the south here. Uh, sorry, the east here, and that'll be there'll be helicopters. Uh, it'll be the helicopter base. It'll be kind of the reinforcement area. Uh, the reason I have asphalt roads here going off in the road, uh, like dirt roads, is I realized looking at maps that the Peach Valley is actually pretty well constructed. There's a lot of traffic that goes there, through there, like um, semis and uh, loggers and stuff like that. So having asphalt roads is not that, that uncalled for down there, but once you get off into the uh, valley, there's no way there's asphalt down there. Looks like my river texture didn't load or something. So there used to only be one way up uh, through the valley. So now there's three ways up. And the insurgents really need to go out of their way if they want to block the other three. Actually, now that I think about it, there's four ways. There's another way that kind of goes directly into the valley. See, right there, that may be something to look at. So here's what we're going to do. Yeah, see that bend in the road? That's just too much. flatten that out a little bit. I'll be right back.
right back. This whole area here has not been built out, as you can tell. Just pretty kind of done real quick just to kind of flush it out. Somewhere down here, somewhere, will be the chopper base. But that's probably too close to the edge of the map. And this is just an error that'll get fixed. It's just, uh, it's out of bounds and it's just not important right now. So we may have it down here or something like that. Somewhere where the insurgents won't fire upon it or we'll put it out of bounds or something like that. Or maybe up in the mountains, who knows. Alright, let's see if this guy can get back up there. fix that. Sometimes you'll see floating rocks when you're doing the uh, auto road or the that's just a error that gets fixed by itself or you just click once on it. All right so we were able to pass that so let's go back and fix that road. Right now I'm really only concerned about the road area, but things like that I'll fix. And then I'm going to go back through, which uh, I kind of call Greeble Pass. Greeble. It's basically just going and breaking things up a little bit. But getting the road system down first is what's super important. I had a question yesterday of why I smooth a lot of these cool looking features. The problem is you get some weird, you get some weird stretching um, and you don't really want to see that in a video game because people, you know, you have other players that can hide behind it. That's kind of odd. Um, it's just something you got to really think about. I would love to have a lot of very vertical surfaces. But what I tend to do is pull the pieces out and instead of smoothing the edges, I smooth the sides. And that gets rid of a lot of those issues. Kind of like right there. Let's see if I can do it right here. See how that geo's screwy right there? Fortunately, that's just, unfortunately, with video games.
Everything seems to be working. Still kind of tough for the trucks, but I'm okay with it being tough. This is not supposed to be easy for the U.S. They have scopes, they have helicopters, they have all the firepower. The insurgents need to have one map where they're not being totally decimated. So far, so good. Oh, I think I can, I think I can. It's funny, the insurgent vehicles go up like, go up this like it's nothing. This might be pretty steep. cool thing about these speeds is you're going to see some really cool convoys. And hopefully if a squad introduces, which I think may have been said somewhere, introduces uh, gear shifts and being able to control your speed, it's going to be pretty cool, I think. Logistics is going to be super important up here. If all your helicopters get shot down. Oh, can it make it? can. I got to really think about that. That was real close. If I look, I could probably fix that a little bit. I think I'm going to skip it. It still got up. That does look right. Look at that. All right, we're gonna fix this. Oh no! Oh, unreal.
that was unfortunate. Getting hot in here. Well, at least it saved a little bit, that's good. Yeah, I think I have 48 gigs in here. I might have less. Maybe it's 32. It's it's an old system though. I've had for a while. Brigham, what is a uh, fish mo mole? Oh, yeah, I can show you that to you. Hold on. So I think everything is kind of set up in like 100 being the uh, size, like the default size of a lot, a lot of things. So for example, so that's a huge road. But if you look at the size of the control points, they're a hundred. They were a thousand, sorry. So a lot of my roads I set to about 350 or 400. But then this side fall off, this is where it'll like it'll totally ruin the area for you. So if I bring this down to a hundred, I don't know if you can see that on the map. Let's see if I can turn the landscape off. No, that doesn't help. So if I put the side width to 400, it's basically twice the size of your road. So if your road width is 400, your side fall off on each side is 200 and 200. And then for an end fall off, I always just turn this off. Because I don't really need it. But then under there, say you put a, say you put a road in. So I can put a road on here. So that road is, at, the way I think of it, it's the road is now 400. The width is 400 because the control points say that. Or it, or it's 100%. The road is 100% of the width of whatever these are. 
But you can also scale these. Like, I can scale this road. Uh, so now this road is twice what these guys are. It's just going to say you're actually scaling the mesh, not the control points. So I can put this lower too, like 0.25, but just keep it at 1. And then for a lot of my roads, just because I have such a hilly uh, landscape, I in order, I've been putting this at about 2. So you see that curve right there? That just kind of helps blend it into the ground. But you don't have to do that. And then you also have, you have scale to width. So if I turn this off, the road is now going back to the actual mesh size. So if I go back here, change this to 100, nothing changes. To 1000, nothing changes. Well, now the fall off, sorry, I forgot to hit the button. The uh, fall off is still the correct size. I always turn this off. I'm sorry, I always turn it on. And the center is just, uh, it, uh, it tries to put the mesh in the middle of the spline. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And one thing to remember, if you like, oh, I don't really like this road, and you delete the segment, these guys still stay, and those can end up being just orphaned all over your uh, project. So what I will normally do is, say you hit a segment, I hit the control points, didn't delete the control points, now it's clean, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, I don't use the mesh scale because actually I have no reason why other than I just would rather hit the actual um, uh, the spline the spline uh, control points because then you can actually make us you can make a road get bigger and smaller. While on a road that doesn't make a big difference, but on rivers that may be that may be something you want to do. Actually, I don't know why this is not loaded. Oh, I wonder if I accidentally moved this. Yeah, I think I was cleaning something up. I was moving some files around trying to get this to work. Can't, can't find it. So I gotta take a, I gotta take a look at this again, anyways. Does that fix anything? Alright, well, I'll have to fix it later. I kind of know what happened to it. Since I did all that, I should probably save it. Let's just take a second.
Oh, saving files. Yeah, 32 gigs is what I'm running. You see that warping? Right there. Those are the kind of things you don't want, so let's go ahead and fix that. The fun of making a level that's super hilly. Look at the tops here. I'll get the sides. So we still get to keep our shape, sort of. But we get rid of um, all this crap. Back at it. So that part's gone, no more stretching, which is exactly what we're looking for. It's pretty rough here too. But there's a road up there, so... The way to fix this is I could pull this road back a little bit, which is probably what I should do. Everyone wonders why this map's taking so long. <laughs> These are the reasons. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Might help that, uh... Might help driving up here as well. Yeah, I've seen that. It just that seems like a Seems like a lot of work to go back and forth trying to fix that. I'd rather try to fix it now.
Because even though I could fix those loads, it, it's bad geometry. They're really stretched right there. And, you know, stretched, stretched textures don't look great. There we go, it's solved. Nope. The main idea is to get the most of the major stretching, the most of the major issues out of the way first, then I can go back and play with it. Hey, Zeno, how you doing? Not sure how far back the uh, stream is. That's squealing tires, you know. You tell me. <laughs> I probably should fix that part, but... This whole valley does not have uh, does not have vegetation quite set up for it. That's one more pass I need to do. That's why it looks so bare. And there's a little bit of vegetation on the cliffs. That's not supposed to be there. Hold real quick and save since we had that crash last time. Are these uh, new roads, Zeno? Save, save, save. Uh, here's what we we're going to fix before it crashed. Yeah, I'll show you what I've been doing, Zeno. It kind of works. So here I'm doing a... This is raising it up.
pull it out a lot. And I found the uh, raised terrain and then going up the road tends to work a lot better than going down. Like if I went this way. I'm sorry, that's backwards. If I go down the road by raising the terrain. It tends to work a lot better. And then kind of build it out a little bit. that now but you can see the road is now working it's got a nice little lip too so here I'm gonna do a lower very low size or sorry big size very low value uh, the background music I believe is the squad OTS if it's too loud, I can turn it down. That sounds kind of weird. So I push the uh, push the mountain back a little bit. It's going to create a lot of stretching textures. And then I go to the top. Brush fall off. You want it to super fall off all the way. Still a low value to it. Well, you can turn it up a little bit. And then I go to the top. And you want to start real high and work your way down. The unfortunate side effect is you get just kind of a blah surface, but it's about the best kind of cliff you can get. Yeah, it does sound like an alien. <laughs> that load loading screen music. So yeah, we have some vegetation here, but that's uh, that's just a fault of mine that needs to be fixed. I have a cliff blending texture in here, but it's kind of it's pushed to all the materials almost. So there's just a compile program or compile issue. All right, let's get back and see—is this one doing it too? It is. Let's see if we can just fix it this way. It's going to have to be pushed back a little bit. Well, no, that does work, doesn't it? All right, let's keep driving. Whoops. Yeah, I'll go get it. Yeah, let me check it right now, actually, because this is a good spot to look. I'm 
not sure if this is where it is. A lot of my settings are just copied from other maps or seeing what works where. All right, yeah, I'm under load. I think the last time I adjusted this, my FPS has like dropped significantly. So maybe some I have to go through each section and just kind of set. Because I don't know much about the loads. Oh, I do have the uh, outside turned on, too. <laughs> hey, I'm just an artist. I think another map had it at four. So five is the max. I think why I eventually set it to one, because I wasn't really thinking about it, is things disappear off in the distance. So let's take a let's take a trip. into the valley. So there's one. And there's two. Or sorry, four. Oh, interesting. All right, well, I'll definitely have to take a look at that a little bit later. Uh, that's good to know those settings. Still, though, I still want to make sure that the close-up stretching, you know, it's better just to get rid of it up front. You know people are going to be pissed off that they're, they're like, oh, man, I've been trying to shoot somebody, but I can't hit them far away. What's up, Fuzz? Alright, let's keep driving up this road. See if there's any other places we get caught up. And for you people just joining, that, uh, that, uh, that's just the outside, um, landscapes that you won't be playing in and because I did some updates I forgot to update that out there so that's what's up should probably watch where I'm going oh, oh see this is screwed up talking away
What's that, Fuzz? Yeah, as you know, all my roads are set to two. It that's what really it really works out really well. Yeah, I'll definitely put uh, the bottom part of this uh, valley doesn't have the proper doesn't have the proper vegetation, so that needs to go back. So it'll be filled out a little bit more because it looks super barren right here. But as we go up, you'll see more and more rocks and all that stuff. Uh, thanks, Fuzz. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do a little bit more of this. Helps me also talk through it and see what's missing, what needs to be done. Imagine getting pushed off that. Actually. Someone makes a mistake. Hey, no, no, no problem, guys. I'll turn around. No! How about them physics? Exactly. I do worry about that sometimes. People are like, ah, don't worry, I'll just drive off the side and get back to base. Now, I'm not sure once you're on a server if this little bit of, uh, if there's any kind of lag or anything like that will affect this. So we're barely going up. That's something I'll try out a little later when I push it to my own uh, live build. Again, this map is made to be really hard for the U.S. The real place was really hard. Because I feel like a lot of maps are... They're not tailored to be uh, for the insurgents or for the U.S. It's just, you know, the U.S. has optics. They have all the nice, fun things. So this is, you know, the U.S. is just going to be doing an uphill fight on this the whole time. Especially if you lose all your helicopters. So I'm not going to worry about the walls right now. Let's just, because uh, I don't have a lot of time left. So let's just make sure that this truck can get all the way up, all the way around into the valley. We won't do, uh, this is just the east side. Uh, last time we did a drive around, and that was 38 minutes it took for a techie to get all the way around this map. So we won't be doing that this time. 
This is more of a, a tech pass, if you will. Can I get the Lodgy up the east side? And I'm not paying attention. Needs to be fixed. Yeah, it's only four K, Sprigum. You know, most maps, 4K, if you could just drive right across, it doesn't take that long. Oh, see, I don't know if this is going to make it. Might take a look at this again. Four K may be too tiny, but like I just said, it did take thirty eight minutes to drive around the whole thing. So think about that. up somewhere. Ooh, interesting. I definitely like to see a lot more uh or you know we have a lot of Afghanistan maps but doing some uh you know some Chinese or Asian maps would be kind of cool. Just 3 more weeks, Spriggins. You know, you might want to try uh, reaching out to the community. I had a lot of people telling me they would help me with assets. Maybe I should have, uh, you know, maybe I should have took them up on that. But luckily, the northern Afghanistan Afg uh, assets came out, which really helped.
Yeah, you don't have to always be um, truly original. I mean, my corn gal from PR looks nothing like this. But I think that, you know, having that feeling uh, of the same map is pretty cool. So you didn't notice we're now heading into the snow part of the map. And we'll start to see uh, vegetation, trees change. Uh, rocks won't really change, uh, but the ground will start changing a little bit. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of trucks and cars come around these corners and either ramming head on or just getting blown to smithereens by an ambush. I'll probably have to fix that. Oh, nice, Brigham. I'm amazed PR is still putting out stuff. Not not that it's a bad game or it's bad devs or anything like that. It's just, man, it's such an old engine. And I know when I was working on it, the maps, the map uh, editor was, my god, I wanted to kill myself. It's only about halfway. Sorry for the map brightness. Slap the uh, mini map on there last minute. So gotta fix these hills. <laughs> yeah, def definitely three more weeks. I was actually planning on releasing uh, an updated version of this on Steam, and then I noticed the uh, there's some French uh, clan that are doing a big game night on earlier version earlier version of Corngal. So since things have moved, I haven't talked to them, but since things have moved on my map, I think I'm going to wait till their event's over just so it doesn't screw up their whole night or they don't have to quickly go in and fix their game mode or whatever they have running. Because that would suck. Like, okay, guys, get ready for this uh, you know, game night. And then like, wait a minute, why is nothing working? Which is okay, because I've done a lot of changes, and I want to make sure before I push that out to the general public, it's a much, much better shape than it is now. Oh, I don't know if I can make this. And I did.
I should probably fix that. Fix it right here. Yeah, one of the main reasons I released it in the first place was I was the only one looking at it. And, you know, it's just like, a, you know, you have blinders on, so you're missing some obvious things. Like these expanded roads that I did. Everyone was telling me I should do it, and I was like, ah, nah, nah, nah. And then once I released it, saw some people kind of playing around with it, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I really should. Where'd it go? There it goes. It's funny, there's this another guy, I can't quite remember his name off the... the uh, yeah, I can't remember his name, but he has released his own version of Korngal on the Steam store for a squad. Uh, he he didn't realize that there that I had started working on one a while ago, um, which is cool, you know. Hey, like you know, go for it, man. Like if you make one that's better than mine, I'm still making mine no matter what. So, uh, man, he's gotten a little bit of hate from people, which is which is not cool. People are like, oh, your sucks at you know blah blah blah, and I don't know. It just seems kind of rude to to say things like that to someone. And especially that person that I saw that was talking a lot of shit. He had talked about starting a map, but he wasn't able to finish it because it was too hard. And then he turns around and talks shit to this guy about how crappy his map is. That takes some balls. Yeah, it sucks. Like, you know, we're all doing this on our you know free time. It's cool to give constructive, you know, feedback to people like, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Like, have you thought about this? Like, you know, as a as a mapper, that's tol that's totally acceptable and welcome too. You know, like, yeah, you want to hear what other people have to say. Because lots of you know, sometimes they'll be like, hey, have you thought of this? And then this or that, and also you're like, oh no, I haven't. And then you do it, and you're like, man, that was that's exactly what it needed. Let's see if this hill works now. We're a little over halfway to the uh, point I want to get to. Oh yeah, see, look, this works a lot better. Come back and fix some of these hills. And trees hovering. Might be too much. Yep. Eh. No, I'm gonna fix that. And this and this is mapping, at least for me, is maybe this is why this map's taking so long, it's just going back and forth, back and forth. 
I've had a few crashes here and there. Major crashes. So always back your shit up. Some of them I've had to dig through backup files. Unreal's backup files just to find the right files, piece them back together. Not fun. Look at those unescapable holes. Wow. Now those will be fixed later. Floating rocks. Those will reset themselves next time. It's basically when you use the uh, road tool and it pushes and pulls the uh, ground around, the, those things just don't get updated. Just requires easy rebuild or I just hit it with a uh, modeling brush and it goes back. Okay, so now we're heading into a different valley. This is not the targeted value valley yet, and I'll probably have to drive back up this road at some point to make sure the roads are not too steep. Because I have a feeling they might be. Yeah, these might be. For another day. These valleys are going to eat so many logistic trucks. There's going to be piles at them at the bottom. Squad 2 is going to be calling for supplies. We need them now. Squad 3 is going to be like, don't worry, we're on it. And then blue hat number five will just accidentally roll off the cliff with all the logistics. And then that's how the game is over with. Kind of like that. I'll wait till it starts getting played and people put together like compilations. Oh, speaking of, almost missed it. People have compilations of a uh, of logistic trucks just going over the side. Yeah, I don't think going back the other way, this truck's gonna be able to make it up, which is fine. Just re-engineer it a little bit. Just dealing with one way right now. A lot of these back roads, I think, once I look into like cave systems, I think these areas will be played a lot more. Trying real hard to keep a lot of this feeling very rural, very undiscovered. That's why the Russians, the, the US, everyone has had a problem up here. So many places to hide, so many places to run away to. 
And the actual place doesn't even have real roads like this. So can you imagine being like, you know, U.S. with your pack hiking over these damn hills? All right, we're almost there. So far, no big issues, which is good. Last thing you want to hear is a bunch of people saying, hey, we can't get a lodgy over this road or can't get up this road. The whole game was ruined. That would kind of suck. Speaking of... That might be too steep. But I made it. I thought about that, but um, one, the vehicles don't drive over the ground very well. And it also doesn't really give a clear path for where players need to go. And on top of that, it adds one more landscape texture, which I'm hitting the, the, the maximum on a lot of these. For example, I can't really have snow and gravel on the same same area, or I just don't, I get a bad landscape. Because I think you only get four. So I got sand, dirt, um, what's my other ones? Snow, gravel, and crops is the other one. So maybe that's what it is. If I have snow, crops, and gravel, I can't have those. Oh, and then I also have a cliff texture that goes on all of those. So anytime there's a slope anywhere, it switches to a um, gravel or a cliff texture. That's where the problem ha happens. Yeah, as you know, I have it. Um, I mean, I've, at this point, I've just built around it at this point, so I don't have that problem anymore. I used to have sand and. Oh, I had river as well. River was a texture. And uh, I I just got rid of the river one because I figured sand worked just as well. And if you got, you know, a, ri a river spline going over it, you don't really need it. Yeah, I tried Xeno putting tons more, but uh, I kept running into that problem. Maybe I have a... Maybe I have a setup somewhere that I don't have set right. All my textures should be set to uh, wrapped. I mean, this is my. I've never really. I've never used Unreal before, so this is my first time. So I'm not on the technical side. I'm. You know, I. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Is it going to make it? I'm going to fix this. That's too steep. Luckily, we have a lot to play with here. Yeah, see, that'll fix it a lot. I'll definitely look into it, Zeno. Um, like I said, I kind of just now just work around it. It would be nice to have, like, you know, kind of a road 
uh, road texture, but this seems to work. Good to know. Let's see if that works. How did I not know that? Oh, it also does it on the uh Right, we're almost at the top. And my dog and my wife are calling, so. Still steep, but we're able to get up pretty easily. Almost there. missing. I think I did this a few places. So when I went to like re reset a whole road or uh, do the uh, push and pull, I didn't have that problem. I didn't do it didn't do the whole network system because that would take a while. All right, so we're at the top. This goes into the main. Um, the main valley, at least one part of it, as you can see right there. Looks like I don't have brakes. Cool. Thanks, guys, for uh, watching. I'm gonna try to do some more of these because uh, it's nice being, you know, it's nice talking in real time to people, getting some feedback. You know, like Zeno telling me hit R is auto rotate. It's been, you know, been working on this a year, and I didn't know that. Probably should have read the uh, documentation. Uh, yeah. And that is it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah. Bye.